All right, let's get talking. What is the normal skin tone for African Americans? Now, right now I'm showing you something that I found on Google Books where I do a lot of my research. And this is this a book entitled Wanderings on the Seas and Shores of Africa. This is on page 126. I would click on it, but something's going on with my scroll bar and you won't be able to see the uh, actual text. But this is from David Francis Bacon 1843, and he says, the Ebos are not a very black race, but rather a yellowish brown, a little darker than ordinary American mulattoes. He goes on to say some other insulting things, which are not uh, important right now. Okay, moving on, and this I will show how this relates to African Americans or at least try to. So this is from Egypt Search, although some might say this is a pseudo-hotep site. The information right now does not relate to their hotepery. Okay, so it's showing here, and it may be difficult to read. Um... Basically, it's showing skin color diversity of uh, evil people. It says, African skin color diversity. One of the biggest groups in Nigeria, the Ingwa people, have skin color ranges in the lighter shades at almost 20%. The West African Ngwa people of Southern Nigeria is not a small group at all, but among the largest, but among the largest. The Ingwa and Igbo group constitute the largest and most populous sub-ethnicity or clan in southeastern Nigeria. And this is an example of two Ngwa women. This is not her natural hair by the way. Okay. And then we can close, or well, we can go to this. And this is an individual by the name of Isaac Okoro. Both of his parents are from uh, Nigeria, and both his parents are of the Igbo ethnicity. This now goes into this. Someone asks. Why are there so many light skin ebos? And then they go on to try to explain why they think there are. Uh, it says a scientific and historic review on fair skin amongst the ebos. Why are ebos? Fair skin is a question we often hear asked, but why is this? Why are there so many fair skin ebos? In this article, we'll take a look at some of the plausible, re plausible reasons w as to why this might be the case. To start, let's clarify the following. Ebos aren't the only African ethnicity with significant numbers of light-skinned people. Like many other West Africans, most Igbo people have brown or dark brown skin. Remember the Ingwa people where only 20% of them are uh, light skin. What is light skin? Amongst Africans from the continent, 
Determining whether someone is deemed dark or light skinned is based on whether or not their skin complexion is lighter than the average skin tone of the others around them. This is the definition we're referring to in this article. Many Igbo people who fall into this category are phenotypically similar to those with darker skin, hair, texture, noses, etc. So why is it just Igbos that are stereotyped this way? The three largest ethnic groups in Nigeria are Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. When people think of Nigeria, they frequently refer to these groups. Igbos tend to have more light-skinned people compared to the other major ethnic groups. As a result, people often associate Igbos with having lighter skin. Is there a plausible explanation as to why? In terms of skin color, Africa is the most visually diverse continent on the planet. Sun exposure, temperature, natural selection, migration, and mixing influence these differences. Okay, so this is what they're claiming. It's other people who claim that they're just uh, sort of uniform in color, but this is what this article is saying. This article will attempt to use as much scientific and historical information available to explain why mid to light brown skin tones are found across the coastal areas of Nigeria and why higher concentrations exist in the southeastern region, especially among the Igbo, Ibibio, Ifik, etc. Now, by the way, those are... Person. Uh, some of the main groups who were transported to the Caribbean and what is now the United States. Environmental, environment, adaptation, and natural selection. I might not read this whole article. Uh, across the world, different ethnic groups have different skin tones. These skin color variations likely occurred due to thousands of years of natural selection, resulting in people with traits that are better adapted to their environment. It's well known that people with darker skin have more melanin. Melanin protects you from the sun's UV rays and it assists the body in making vitamin D production, an essential pro-hormone the body needs to stay healthy. Okay. And then it goes on. It says, since different parts of the world have different levels of sun exposure, it makes sense that people's skin adapts to suit their environment over time. For example, indigenous nilo saharans in the Sahara Desert tend to have darker skin than those in more tropical regions like southern Nigeria, where vegetation provides more protection from the sun's rays. Okay, so this is showing you... Uh, a green where the Igbo country is located. And this is showing you where it says from lightest to darker skin. And we see this area here where they're located it says as demonstrated below much of southeastern nigeria relies within the rainforest regions of the world in these regions plants provide protection against sunlight with only 2 to 15 percent of the sun's light reaching the ground from an evolutionary viewpoint it would make sense that slightly less melanin is needed in these regions Okay, so that is one explanation they give. And they have this map again showing tropical areas. Okay. <clears throat> and this is another study. Okay, we go down to this in the ge genetics. Previously, we, we examined this from another article. Previously, we examined the study, why do, some Niger, why do some Nigerians have ginger hair? And found that 1 in 500 to 1 in 1,000 Southern Nigerians have reddish 
hair skin. The study show many people with this trait are from Beni and Igbo areas. Although the phenotype is rare, most would be classified as light skin. Additionally, people with various kinds of albinism can also be classed as having light skin. Uh, additional addition random genetics another genetic reason for the light skin trait could be unexplainable random gene variants mixing as migration occurs people are likely to mix this is most evident in countries like Sudan where nowadays the average Sudanese Sudanese person has mixed Arab and indigenous black African ancestry this can be seen in their complexion and other phenotype like hair texture some have suggested that Ebos have lighter skin because of mixing with one or more of the following. Semitic Hebrew slash Jewish people, Portuguese slave traders, British slave traders. Let's look at each and see how plausible these theories are. Mixing with lighter skin Semitic Hebrew Jewish people. There is no legitimate evidence that suggests that Ebo people are descendants of Jews slash Hebrews, etc. This includes pre-Christian religious practices unique to Igbos that connect them with Jews. For example, male circumcision is practiced by many worldwide who are unrelated to the Jewish faith. Looking at historical timelines, Igbos predate Hebrews like many indigenous Africans. Several aspects of the traditional Igbo religion and way of life, Odinala, are considered deeply non-culture within the Jewish faith having idols, eating crayfish, and other non-kosher foods, etc. Fans of this idea have been dedicated with their attempts to spread these ideas, but there is yet to be any credible evidence to prove this. See references at the end of this page. We'll shed more light on this in another article. Transatlantic slave trade mixing with the Portuguese. It is well documented that the Portuguese arrived on the shores of West Africa in the late 1400s, and in 1480. 85, they began slave trading with the Bini Kingdom. The Portuguese also traded with Old Calabar. However, the Portuguese didn't travel far inland due to illnesses like yellow fever and other difficulties. They relied on coercion and negotiations with natives to bring enslaved people to the port. Since the overwhelming majority of Igbo people lived inland, it's unlikely any had direct interaction with the Portuguese. The Portuguese had much more recorded interaction with the Khan people in Ghana. However, in comparison to Igbos, there are far there are fewer Akans who would be classified as light skinned. If there was prevalent mixing between the Portuguese and West Africans, it would be more evident amongst the groups they had significant interactions with. For people to show visible DNA from another ethnicity, it often requires the incoming group to establish structured colonies. That way, significant amounts of people, typically men, have access to women to bear children, e.g. Portuguese in South America. In this case, the intention of the Portuguese on the coast in this case, the intention of the Portuguese on the coast of Nigeria was business. Three transatlantic slave trade mixing with the British. The bulk of the slave trading between the British and Ebos occurred in the 1700s, however. Most British slave traders didn't penetrate deep in land where Ebos resided. They relied on negotiation and coercion to establish networks of native rulers along the seacoast who would work with Igbo middlemen to bring enslaved people down to the coast. This wouldn't have provided the opportunity to intermix at the levels required to influence the entire ethnic group. It was primarily African men who interacted with African men. Usually women would be the carriers of external DNA, generally through illegitimate pregnancies. Most women brought to the shores would have been sold into slavery, not impregnated by a European and sent back to her village. Due to the number, due to the significant number of fair-skinned Igbo enslaved people, they were referred to as Red Igbo on arrival in Jamaica. This suggests the characteristic existed before the transatlantic slave trade. British colonization. Of all the mixing theories, this seems most plausible because during colonization, many British people found themselves serving the interests of the British Empire and had interactions with native people. It's possible that some had illegitimate children with 
state of Igbo women. However, intermixing was not that prevalent, and this short period of colonization is unlikely to justify the millions of Igbo people who are of a lighter hue. And as previously detailed, by that time, it had already been documented that Igbos had lighter skin, red Igbo, slavery in Jamaica. Uh, addition, in each theory stated above, above, none account for the fact that for many light-skinned Igbos, there aren't, noticeable, there aren't notable differences in other phenotypes, hair, texture, nose, etc., to suggest significant admixture with non-African people. Returnee enslaved people. Another reason for the existence of European slash non-African DNA in Igbo societies is enslaved people returning to Africa and mixing with other Nigerians. Formerly enslaved people would have returned. Would have uh, formerly enslaved people would have started to return to Africa from the from the 1800s onwards, and this may account for some who have minor percentages of non-African DNA. However, as discussed above, this still wouldn't explain the pre-slavery existence of Igbo fair skin. Okay. And then it goes on to tell you, ultimately, I'll skip some parts, some parts. Ultimately, genetics control how much melanin a person produces, and it's something that can vary drastically even, excuse me, amongst blood siblings. No shade of black makes someone more or less Igbo than another. We hope that eventually as African people, we learn that we have to appreciate our, our skin the utmost because more often than not, the rest of the world won't. Okay, so this now we would do, uh, show this. Might take some time. Okay, so you won't be able to read this, unfortunately. Maybe, uh, says Jimmy, an Igbo Negro, about 5 feet 10 inches high, of a yellowish complexion. Okay, ran away from the subscriber. This is uh, back in 1755. Ran away from the subscriber in Bertie County near Meharan River on the 20th instant. Three Negro men slaves. V's, whatever V's means. Jimmy, an Igbo Negro, about five feet ten inches high, of a yellow complexion. And this is from uh, the Virginia Gazette, Hunter, Williamsburg, October 17th, 1755. So there were people who were from Africa who were described as having a yellow complexion back in the 1800s who were in uh, what is now the United States. Okay, now, this is showing you, that people from southeastern Nigeria, who open, If it will open, okay, were in fact brought to Virginia, which is now, of course, the United States, and just leave this to okay, here it is, okay, it says. The cargo for purchasing 200 Calabar Negroes, being one of the sorts usually carried to Virginia, commonly counts, commonly amounts, I'm sorry, to about 1,000 pounds. It was pounds because Virginia was once part of uh, Britain. The duty of 40 shillings per head to be paid on the said Negroes, being 400 pounds, is an imposition of 40% on the said cargo. Okay, so this is Virginia, 1723, 1723 to 1724. This is from the book, Documents Illustrative of the History of the Slave Trade to 
um, let me see if I can find the full page for the full title of this. Yep, it says documents illustrative of the history of the slave trade to America. I'm closing this out. We'll close this out. We're going to this. John Brown. This is about a runaway slave who escaped and went to England and wrote uh, or he dictated, if he couldn't write, he dictated his life and how he escaped. Slave Life in Georgia, a narrative of the life sufferings and escape of John Brown, a fugitive slave now in England. Brown, John uh, F.L. flourished 1854. And he goes on, and I have to get past all this. I need to go, and that's his picture. Okay. And uh, it goes on down where he describes where his, his grandfather. He says. My father's name was Joe. He was owned by a planter named Benford, who lived at Northampton. In the same state, state of Virginia, I believe my father was. I believe my father and his family were bred on Benford's plantation. His father had been stolen from Africa. He was of the Ebo tribe. I remember seeing. I remember seeing him once when he came to visit my mother. He was very black. Okay, so in this case, uh, you have one who was very black. And there's something else that's interesting. Uh, he mentions that he, his mother's niece name was Annie K. Now, Annie K. Annie K. Um, some there's some who feel like this name Annie K may be like uh, related to the Evo name Neka. Okay, now we go into Captain Hugh Crow. He was a slave trader who dealt in Igbo slaves. The Igbos, though not generally a robust, though not generally a robust, are a well-formed people of the middle stature. Many of their women are of remarkably symmetrical shape, and if white, would in Europe be deemed beautiful. This race is as has been already remarked, of a more mild and engaging disposition than the other tribes, particularly the Quas, and although and though less suited for the severe manual labor of the field, they are preferred in the West India colonies for their fidelity and utility as domestic servants, particularly if taken there when young, as they become the most industrious of any of the tribes taken in the colonies. Their skin is generally of a yellowish tinge, but varying to a jet black. So we see um, already one from uh, Virginia being described as yellowish. We see one uh, from Virginia being described as very black. And we see this saying that they vary from they say they're generally of a yellowish tinge but varying to a jet black now if this was something that was noted amongst people who can be shown to be ancestors of african americans then what 
exactly is the skin tone, the normal skin tone of an African American person. Cut this out now. And this shows you now. This is a form, but we're just looking at the visuals. from Lipstick Alley. If it will decide to let me see it. going on okay so this is an example of an Igbo of an Igbo man Igbo woman is also interesting in, in, light, in, in regards to those African Americans who deny being African and use a penny to compare themselves to to say that they are American because of a definition of Americans as being copper colored. To be hard to vouch for hair texture because of the proclivity for women of African descent to wear what some describe as hair hats. But you can go down. Let's add this in the way. Let's get rid of this ad. But on twenty three and me. Now that they've done a certain update, it's not unusual for African Americans and especially also Afro Caribbeans, especially from the Anglophone Caribbean, to be uh, or to show Igbo people as whom they are related to. Maybe an example of the red hair gene genetics. We do see diversity in skin tone here. But generally Negroid facial features. Sometimes, though, I would say that I don't, I can't vouch for just a picture, just pictures of people, what who, what their backgrounds are. I do know that both of his parents are Igbo. I do not know if she is mixed or not. We 
notices we notice this uh, I guess what some would describe as copper skin tone hard to know what her skin tone would be if it weren't in black and white Again, uh, 